my selected designer from the What Was Good Design 1944 to 1956 exhibition is Earl Tupper. Earl Silas Tupper was born in 1907 on a farm located in Berlin, New Hampshire, USA. His father, Ernest, would frequently come up with labor-saving schemes and devices when working on the farm. His influence inspired Tupper to become an inventor when he grew up. After graduating from high school in 1925, age 17, Earl made it his goal to make his first millions of dollars before he turned 30. When he turned 19, Earl took a tree tending course at Bryan and Stratton University to become a landscaper. After graduating from his course in 1931, Tupper opened up his first business, Tupper Tree Doctors. The company had a moderately successful five-year run until it had to be closed down in 1936 due to the Great Depression. On the same year, Tupper met Bernard Doyle, an inventor and a plastics factory worker. Doyle offered Tupper a job at his factory, which was the plastic subdivision of DuPont. Seeing the possibilities of using plastic, Earl worked at the factory between the years of 1937 and 1938 before departing. From working at Doyle's factory, Tupper gained enough experience to begin experimenting on plastic to expand on the material's potential. He had received polyethylene slag from DuPont, which was waste detained from DuPont's oil division and some second-hand plastic machine to experiment it with. By refining the slag into a usable form, Tupper managed to create Poly-T, which was a revolutionary plastic made to be bendy, sturdy and translucent, and became the main material used for Tupper's future products. In 1942, during the Second World War, Tupper opened Tupper Plastics, a product manufacturer, and received his first contracts through the pond. It was to help the war effort by making several pieces of equipment for use in the US Army. After the World War, Tupper began producing cigarette cases, sandwich picks, and tumbler cups but attained minimal profit as his wares would often be given away as free bonuses for other products. His products would be marketed as Tupperware. Continuing to experiment with plastic, Tupper invented airtight seals which would cover the top of a Tupperware bowl or container entirely, allowing for any food stored inside the container to become preserved for longer when stored inside the fridge. The concept was revolutionary, but due to customers not understanding how the lids worked properly, the lids also failed commercially. In the late 1940s, Tupper found out that his wares were being sold independently by household party distributors. He would create a business relationship with two distributors, Brownie Wise and Thomas Damigella. Both Brownie and Thomas were employees of Stanley Home Products, which was a company that sold goods primarily through social events and interactions with customers being at the events. As the airtight lids were a mostly unknown concept during that time, both Brownie and Thomas urged Tupper to begin selling his products in a home party format. That way, the airtight lids and the rest of his products could be demonstrated and explained directly to the customers present at the home party. The combined efforts of the trio allowed Tupper Plastics to become financially successful, reopening itself as Tupper Home Parties when the goods were sold exclusively in a home party format. In 1958, Tupper sold his company for $16 million after a successful venture in the United States. He would also retire and spend the rest of his life living in Costa Rica. Tupper would then pass away in 1983 from a heart attack and was survived by his sister, five children and 14 grandchildren. Tupper's legacy came in the form of Tupperware success as his products unique and revolutionary designs would allow them to become a staple of American kitchens. One of Tupper's many designs featured in the What Was Good Design exhibition was his polyethylene tumbler cups designed in 1945. Several of Dieter Ram's good design principles applied to the cups which allowed them to be displayed in the exhibition. The principles were established by Rams in the 1980s and have assisted many designers in determining the quality of their products. Here are the five principles I believe are true about the Tumblr Cups. Good design makes a product useful. In addition to holding and serve of drink, the cups can be stacked upon one another for easy storage. Their plastic material also allows them to be cleaned for reuse. Good design makes a product understandable. The design of the tumblers is extremely simple to the point where their shape is unmistakable for another object. Good design is long lasting. The tumbler cups were made primarily for their use and were not intended to be of their time. They were meant to be used by all kinds of people no matter what their interests are and they accomplished this with their neutral, plain and untrendy designs. Good design is environmentally friendly. Polyethylene is a plastic that takes up to decades to biodegrade and has become a prominent environmental issue in the oceans of the world due to their inability to naturally become part of the earth again. However, polyethylene is also recyclable and the most commonly used plastic, meaning that the plastic tumbler cups can be recycled and reprocessed into different plastic products such as bags and bottles. 
That being said, the tumbler cups do adhere to the good design principle of it being environmentally friendly, but this is purely through human effort. Finally, good design is as little design as possible. In my opinion, this principle is the most prominent of the five I have chosen. The tumbler cups are made of primarily plastic and focus on functionality rather than aesthetics. Their straightforward design ignores the inessentials and allows the cups to be marketed with no arbitrary promises as to what they could do. Additionally, the minimal amount of materials used to make the cups are cost efficient and simplify the process of their production. Tupper's minimalist design choices adhering to the 10th principle of good design have inspired me to use similar choices for my works. This particular artwork was meant to display different human emotions using colour as the primary medium. However, I felt that the facial features of the characters were too aesthetically detailed and made the meaning of the work vague. If I remove the non-essential details of this artwork, such as the shading and visual depth of the characters, the facial expressions and colours could become more pronounced, thus emphasising the meaning of the emotions. My conclusion reflects on the focus Earl Tupper had on functionality when making his products. His designs used minimal decoration to appeal to customers, instead using the item's function as the main attractive quality. The main learning outcome I have attained from studying the What Was Good Design exhibition was that functionality is just as important as aesthetic quality. If it wasn't for this information, the designs and products that I may make in the future may be construed as visually remarkable yet useless, or useful but lacking any appealing aesthetic quality.